Let's bring in our panel now. Certainly, there's no doubt that this situation has escalated today. Gladys Berejiklian saying that the state is now in a national emergency. Jane, she's calling for the federal government to rethink the rollout to get as many vaccines into the state as possible. Do you think that now is the time to reallocate jabs into the state? Uh, Danica, I think this is a great opportunity for National Cabinet to discuss this very issue. Obviously, uh, Lieutenant General John Fruin will be uh, speaking to National Cabinet today, as will Dan Andrews, who's called for that ring of steel around Sydney, as will Gladys Berejiklian, who has called for an expansion or a, a additional uh, vaccinations supplies to come to, to come to Sydney, particularly that southwestern Sydney area. So all of those issues will get discussed at National Cabinet. That's exactly what National Cabinet is for. But the great news is, is the rollout is now very well underway. 10.6 million doses have now been administered. Of that 10.6, around 6 million or so have been AstraZeneca, which I think is um, demonstrative of, of the confidence that many people have in that AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, including myself. I've had my first dose of AstraZeneca and I'm due for my second very soon indeed. I think that most people in my age group would probably be about due for that second dose. And we'd encourage as many of them to get out there and take it as possible, as soon as possible. And the Chief Health Officer of New South Wales today uh, took the opportunity at the press conference to correct the mythology she said that surrounds the AstraZeneca jab. Uh, given the current situation, Kimberley and New South Wales, should ATAGI look at reconsidering its warning for under 60s, as the Prime Minister also indicated this week? Well, I think Atagi actually always said that you should get medical advice. I, I think they never, you know, categorically said that people should not get AstraZeneca. And I think the other thing about AstraZeneca, though, Danica and Jane, is that, of course, it's being made right here in Melbourne, just a really a short tram trip from the Melbourne Sky Studios, Danica, and very close by to the Parkville Hospital precinct. So it's being made here by CSL, which is a real Australian success story. It started in 1916 in the depths of, of the First World War. And it's, you know, it provides all of our blood plasmas, our antivenine, and obviously our vaccines. So it's been a real success story. And I think, you know, for anyone suggesting that AstraZeneca isn't good, what they're really also suggesting is that CSL, the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, you know, aren't, aren't up to it. And I think that is absolutely false. I think CSL has been a real success story for over a century. So I think people should consider that as well. But I think we need as many, you know, as many people vaccinated as we can get. And I think if you get a, an Australian-made vaccine, the AstraZeneca, that's good. If you get one from overseas, that's also good. We just need as many people to roll up their sleeves and, and get a vaccine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this week, of course, it was a real admission from the Prime Minister. He came out apologising, uh, saying that the, the current rollout, that he takes full responsibility for the speed at which it has been distributed. Jane Hume, is this an admission from the federal government that it has indeed botched the rollout? I think all Australians know exactly what's happened with this rollout. You know, first of all, we had supply issues specifically with Pfizer and more, most specifically from the EU who, uh, you know, had issues with keeping those those doses onshore themselves for their own population. And then secondly, we had that change in advice that was coming from um, uh, from Atagi around AstraZeneca. And, and Kimberley's exactly right. I think it was a really a communications issue as opposed to a, um, anything else. People understanding that uh, that Targi were telling people to seek advice from their GP about whether uh, AstraZeneca is appropriate to them. But she's exactly right. It's fantastic that we have that capability in Melbourne. I think it would be terrific if uh, Melbourne also put in a bid to be, have a sovereign capability in that mRNA vaccine as well, uh, because we know that there's plenty of opportunities in mRNA, mRNA uh, vaccine manufacturing capability, not just in the vaccine, but also in um, you know, other drugs that, that can come from just having that capability. As a biotech capital of Australia, I think Melbourne should be really going hard on that bid. Uh, but in the meantime, it's terrific to have the sovereign capability for the AstraZeneca here. And it's not just what we can do onshore with our own population, but of course, the doses that we can give our regional neighbours, particularly mm. in the Pacific and, uh, and South Asia, where we've really seen some... Uh, severe outbreaks yeah. of the pandemic that need, that need our help. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and we did see that Danica, one... Danica, could... Yes, Kimberly. 
Oh, I just wanted to add that, you know, we know now that Indonesia is moving away from Sinovac, from that approach, and they're actually using AstraZeneca, which is obviously an efficacious vaccine. So they've changed as well. And of course, we're sending AstraZeneca out to our neighbours, um, which is great because obviously we need every person in the world really vaccinated, certainly in our region, because otherwise that slows down, um, you know, be people being able to, to live life perhaps more normally or what we might consider more normally prior to COVID. So I think we're seeing more countries going to AstraZeneca. And of course, AstraZeneca as well was really what pulled Britain out of its COVID despair. So um, that's what most the vaccine most people got in the UK. So I think, you know, we do need that. I agree with Jane. I think Melbourne has always been, you know, it's been a great um, biotech capital. And in fact, at one point, um, Melbourne had more researchers than uh, Boston did per square metre. Um, so I think that Melbourne should, should bid for that mRNA, cap you know, the capability there. But I think we also need to look at sovereign capability in other regions and other sort of areas. So the Medcon company in Shepparton, which was the only mask producer in Australia at the beginning of the, the pandemic, has actually, it's in a story this week, they were asked, they went from 2 million masks to 60 million masks, but now, they're actually, the, the government's gone out overseas to buy cheaper supplies, cheaper masks. But what we know is that if a pandemic happens again, we're going to need, we are going to need producers here in Australia All of right. PPE. So I think it's a real shame that that company is not, you know, is looking to see what it, it does next. Unfortunately, a bit of a shorter panel today, but we have run out of time. Liberal MP Jane Hume and Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me. Thanks.